Hi guys, and welcome back to The Importance of Being. The video I'm doing today is very different to the ones I normally make. But I felt in view of the situation we're all in at the moment, I felt it was something that I wanted to make. Well, you've seen the headlines. It's on every news bulletin, um, every headline that you see in every newspaper. We're, we're heading for a crisis. Energy bills soaring beyond anything any of us have ever known. Food prices, petrol prices, shortages, strikes, winter coming. And that's added to all the effects that we're still living through after the last two year pandemic. I feel a lot of this is out of our control. A lot of it is. And um, it's very easy to get sort of panicked when all that you're surrounded with in the news and what everyone is talking about is this cost of living crisis. And I have found myself getting panicky and and really quite anxious even though I've tried not to and I don't know if you can relate to this try and keep a sensible head on but you kind of know that we are heading for a really awful winter possibly more than one winter and it seems we've only just come out of two year pandemic with all of the stress and anxiety that we've all been through with that. But lately I've started to get a grip of myself because as I said a lot of what's happening is beyond our control and I've started to focus more on what I can control. What I'm going to cover in this video are the five key actions that I am doing to help me feel a little bit less anxious and a little more prepared for the winter ahead. So Richard and I are doing all that we can to economise and cut costs around the house with energy bills etc and looking at sort of how we can reduce heating bills and I'm sure you're all doing the same. But I guess, I don't know whether it's because I'm a child of the 70s and I remember vividly actually the winter of discontent and all through the 70s, uh, lots of people were going on strike. We had a recession. I remember queuing in the local bakery for bread, um, refuse collection strikes. It's all sounding a little bit familiar. Here we go again. Now, my parents were uh, sort of grew up through World War Two. My father fought in World War Two. And my mother um, remembers the aftermath of the war and all the rationing that went on for years. So I grew up in a household that my parents often talked about sort of preparing. We always had candles in the cupboard and calagas stoves for the inevitable power cuts that happened seemingly quite frequently throughout my childhood. So over the years my mother who is now 83, I lost my dad sadly, but my mum is 83 and in the years leading up to Brexit she was gathering boxes and boxes of dried goods, pasta, dried milk, tinned tomatoes, and we all mocked her and said, you know, what are you doing? And she always said, I lived through rationing, it's in my blood. And, and she was gathering all these boxes and we were like, oh, you know, goodness sake, we're not living in those times anymore. But I've started to realise that my mother is quite wise. And it's only because we didn't live through, even though the 70s, were miserable in many respects. We didn't live through the extreme shortages that must have been around after the war. 
so I guess what I'm trying to say is the thing I can't control is the cost of fuel and we'll do our best to to manage that but the thing I am worried about and I think is coming and what I want to prepare against is power cuts and you know whether that's because it's going to be a very harsh winter coupled with the cost of fuel and with all the strike action that we've been seeing lately I do wonder if we're going to experience you know electric failure which for us will mean that we have no heat in the house because we've got a gas boiler that obviously needs electric to function. The other thing I'm worried about is food shortages. Um, like I said, although we kind of made fun of my mother for sort of gathering and like a magpie with all of these tinned and dried stuff, I think we've all realised from the very early days of the pandemic people panic by you know you've only got to have a little flutter of snow um, and people rush out and they buy bread in the pandemic they were rushing out <laughs> myself amongst them you get caught up in the panic don't you buying pasta and toilet rolls and then they ended up with massive shortages so I kind of now want to take action get control makes me feel a little better and I kind of want to get ahead of the curve and that's what I'm going to talk about today. And the really good thing is I feel I got an ace up my sleeve or at least sitting on the driveway and you might have one too. Yes, my wonderful bongo camper van. Um, as a camper and someone who loves the more simple style of camping, I don't often use hookup when I'm away so I'm kind of used to um, living quite simply when I'm away in my van and traveling. My aim is to create um, an emergency room out of my camper van where we can stay warm, fed and have the means to stay powered up for at least a few days. So here are the five things that I am doing to prepare for potential power cuts and food shortages stocking up. I'm sure I'm not the only one stocking up um, or prepping. <laughs> it's a whole buzzword isn't it and I do like the prepping channels. Never has prepping been so relevant I think in 2022 and when I say prepping and provisioning and stocking up it's for all the things that you can buy in advance. So I am buying staples porridge so cheap so filling so yummy pasta and rice we are buying them now um, in bulk because it's a lot less expensive to do that way I don't keep too much in the van in the winter normally because of rodents but I think this year will be an exception because the idea is I want the van ready I don't want to be fiddling around if the power goes out and there's no lights. I don't want to be rummaging around in the house looking for things. I think I want it all ready. So I will be keeping some things in the van this year. There are lots of things that you can buy. Things that I buy in the van when I'm traveling anyway. Things that don't go off and don't need a fridge. I do like Idaho and Mash. Buy that in Tesco. It's really yummy. Boil in the bag rice is what we usually use. Things like stir fried pasta sauces nice and tasty quick doesn't require much heat to warm it up which is most of the foods that I've shown you here and you can make things in one pan also stocking up on medicine supplies um, paracetamol ibuprofen lemsip germaline plasters and bandages all the usual things I've got a first aid kit here that I normally keep in the van it's got an emergency blanket and all of that stuff um, but yeah, just basic, basic medications, because I remember in the pandemic, the shelves were empty. So I'm getting ahead of the curve and stocking up. You can only buy a few at a time, mind you, of course, for safety. Oh, <laughs> you caught me. Okay, yes, you know, it's uh, emergency supplies of chocolate as well. I'll be keeping it in the van while the weather is still warm. I'll have to eat it. So I'm picking up dried long life goods whenever I see them and wherever I see them 
I like the bargain shops, I like Lidl, I like Aldi, home bargains of course, pound value, B&M bargains, they are rich places for finding foods pretty inexpensively, don't take up much space and that you can keep if you need them. Of course in order to cook if you are without power in the house you need your pans and you know what I'm gonna say <laughs> I've got my ridge monkeys in my cupboards up here and I've got the sandwich toaster one and the XL pan which and I've got my little camping pans and they are really all the only pans that I use now in the van so I've got the means to cook here already in the van along with my crockery knives and forks etc so I'm just making sure that they're all here because sometimes they do wander in the house and keeping them in the van ready if needed right the second thing that I've got my eye on and that I'm doing is checking out and buying where necessary fuel and I'm talking a few different types of fuel here as much and as painful as it is I aim to keep petrol, I have a petrol bongo, I aim to keep the petrol tank fueled up as much as possible. I don't like to let it go more than half now. Um, there was obviously the inconvenience of all the queues at the petrol pumps, but it's just I feel safer and I feel happier when I have a full tank and I know it's painful and the cost of fuel is prohibitive but you use it the same whether you keep the tank full or empty the same amount gets used I just like to keep my tank a bit fuller the other fuel source that's going to be really key for me is I do have a diesel heater here in the van um, so there is a separate tank for diesel under the bonnet and I will be keeping that topped up as well so that I can come in the van and heat it which is going to be critical if we have a power cut and I'm very pleased that I have that fitted. If you want more details on the heater that I have I've done a video previously there will be a link here or is it here <laughs> I never know which side those cards pop up but I will put a link in the description as well. Now what about fuels for cooking? Obviously you know if we don't have power in the house going to need to cook meals here in the van. Mention the type of foods that we're going to stock. We need to cook them. We have already run into one fairly significant problem here. We have camping gas in a locker at the back that we use for our hob here, two burner hob. And we last replaced that two years ago. And a couple of weeks ago, it was running low, I went to our local hardware shop to buy a new one. We use the camping gas and it's out of stock. <laughs> I thought, no problem, I'll find a campsite nearby or a petrol garage and get it there. Haven't been able to locate any at all. We are almost out now. So already a major problem for me. Um, we are going away in the next few weeks so I'm hoping we'll be able to track some down where we're going but <laughs> I'm already stocking up on other fuels for cooking. Um, you can buy this in home bargains, B&M bargains, you can buy it on Amazon, butane fuel. I mentioned these a few videos ago for the camping stove our little portable camping stove. I'm stocking up with those butanes because if I can't get camping gas at least we can use this for cooking as long as our butane lasts of course. But I'm going one step further again, I'm not just going to rely on getting camping gas for the stove in here or butane gas for this stove. I'm thinking even further ahead. I've mentioned 
my stick stove a number of times. So my stick stove, I will put a link in the description. So yeah, free fuel, gather up twigs, dried twigs ideally, put them in the bottom there. You can put a pan on top and warm things up. It's also got, which I've never used yet, it's got a little adapter plate which goes in the top like that and in here I can use a Trangia or other spirit burner and I have bought myself one of those. If you are campers I guess you've already got these. This is a Trangia one, you can get other less expensive ones. Not that these are massively expensive, I think this was £15, but the it's a little, um, I don't know whether it's brass, and inside you've got a little cap, screw top cap, and then you've got a little chamber here where you can put, well you can use the old thing is to use methylated spirits, but I bought, where is it? again from Amazon, some bioethanol fuel. Um, quite inexpensive, but it's clean burning, so it shouldn't leave soot behind, smokeless and odourless, and 100% derived from plants. So it seems a little less harsh than some of the other spirits that you can get. So that just drops on the plate inside. It's got a simmering, so you can adjust the flame a little bit if you need to. That sits on top. So that's an alternative method of heating if all else fails. While I'm on the subject of other fuels, if I am lighting a twig stove using wood or twigs, you can also get compressed fuel bricks, they're in home bargains, I bought some of those as well. But to help light, I use these little, they're called wood wool, um, I talked about them before. They're so easy to light though, and they don't smell horrible. Not that I have any sense of smell, but when I could smell, uh, <laughs> before Covid, they are, they burn such a long time, they're easy to light, so I really, really do like those. I bought these in Home Bargains, bought them last year, I haven't seen them this year, but I know you can get something similar in other supermarkets. I am getting a stock of fuel to keep, so I'm not just reliant on being able to get camping gas, I'm not just reliant on getting the butane canisters, if that all goes, I've got a twig stove as well and um, it can burn bioethanol. So I feel a bit more comfortable now that I've got a few different ways of, of keeping warm out of doors, of course, um, but also cooking. Third thing that I am doing is gathering together all of the rechargeable items that I have. I seem to have accumulated a lot over the years since having a van and having the leisure battery fitted. I've got a couple of these cigarette lighters, USB that plug in here, and obviously I can plug into those mobile phones, my cameras, my lights. I've got a few different lights, and I'm gonna get more as well, because I don't think you can have too many USB lights, and the nights are gonna be dark. Apart from all the essential things like light for the USBs, I keep it, I keep things for leisure as well. So I've got a speaker in here. I've got a fire tablet that's not in here at the moment, but I will have in my bag, which I'm coming on to next. Um, what else? Yeah, you're going to have to keep ourselves entertained. So if we are in here, keep it nice and warm will be fed, got a nice comfy bed in here. So yeah, dark nights, we'll read, watch a film maybe. Um, I've got my Kindle as well, all USB chargeable. 
and they will all be in here where I know where they are and I'm not in a panic rummaging last minute looking for them. The other thing I bought today, and I don't know how it's going to work because I haven't actually tried it yet, but of course I have this leisure battery here, but what if I'm out and about and my phone is about to die um, or I haven't been able to um, get in the house? I bought one of these from Home Bargains. It was under £10. It is a 10,000 mAh, whatever that means, power bank and um, it's, it says it's for charging iPhones and Androids. I don't know whether it will charge camera batteries and other things as well. Um, it's, it's quite light, it's quite compact as you can see, but I thought it would be worth just stocking up on this type of thing. So number three, I am accumulating, gathering and keeping my rechargeable items ready in the van. Number four, I haven't yet but I am going to get a an emergency bag. I'm going to use my small rucksack that I use for walking and in that rucksack it's going to be my get out of dodge bag. Yes I have been watching the preppers channels and I love or the bug out bag some of them call it. Uh, it's the type of bag where normally uh, if I'm going on a trip I'll spend a couple of days gathering bits and pieces, putting them in piles here, there and everywhere, making lists of all the things I need to go away and then eventually I'll, I'll pack it all in the bag. If power goes it's going to be winter and it's going to be dark, you're not going to be able to do that. So what I'm going to do is get everything I need in my bug out bag everything I'm going to need to take in the van so that I've got everything. So it'll be clothes for a couple of days, toiletries I already have in the van, but if I didn't it would be things like that. Um, medicines, the things I've been talking about, glasses, reading glasses, distance glasses, um, phone obviously, <laughs> charger cables. I've got I have a bag full of different chargers that I keep in a van, one for my watch, lots of USB and lightning chargers. I'm going to gather up torches and all the essential things that you would normally pack if you were going away for a couple of days, warm clothes, hats and gloves, etc. And the final thing, there will be other things, but the fifth thing that I'm talking about today is other things to keep warm. Um, I do, I'm fortunate I do have a diesel heater here but what if that didn't work or I didn't have diesel for whatever reason. Um, I'm keeping a sleeping bag here in the van. Normally I don't, I normally like to make sure it's aired in the house but I don't, again, don't want to be rummaging around looking for a sleeping bag and warm stuff if the power goes. So I am keeping, um, I have various throws, throws and blankets in here. They usually stay in here anyway. Um, so it's just the extra things. Also hand warmers. We have a stock of these little gel things that you can boil in a saucepan and then you just click them and they warm. Now they're only tiny but we have used them before we had a heater in the van. We used to stay in the van in the winter and get icy cold on a walk. Put these in the sleeping bag and it's so lovely to just get into a bag that's a little bit warm. So definitely stock up on those if you see them. You can reuse them so they're quite good value. I've mentioned hats and gloves as well, thick woolly socks, thermal underwear, another good top tip to get. And I've had these a couple of years now. Oh, it's dropped off. You can probably see my silver thermal blind behind me. I just did that because you didn't want a view of my garage, did you? 
Um, I ordered these on Amazon a number of years ago. They are specifically to fit a Mazda Bongo. Again, I'll put a link of the ones I bought in the description below. But yeah, they do make a difference. They keep the heat out. Um, obviously, you'd use the silver the other way to keep the heat out. I use them this way because they do, as I said, if you haven't got much light and I'm only using a couple of little LED lights in the winter when it's dark outside, they, the silver does reflect a bit of light around the room, makes it feel a bit more cheerful and disco-y inside. Um, so yeah, we obviously got blinds on the two windows here, but the other blinds fit on the passenger window, the driver's window and the windscreen. They've got little suckers on them so you can turn them around, you can either have them So they've got these little suckers on which you can have so that they stick with the black side facing out or you can reverse it and have the silver side. If I've got any criticism about them, the suckers aren't the best. They're okay but if you do get any condensation they do tend to drop off. I've lost a few along the way as well. Um, it's not a major problem because they usually can sort of um, stay up with just a few less than they should have on. But generally, I think these are really useful to keep things a bit warmer. Okay guys, that is my five things I'm doing right now. Um, it's not done yet. We are now, well, we're almost in September. Uh, so time is marching on. I am gathering things every time I'm in a shop and picking up things like food, um, rechargeable items, batteries, fire lighters, matches, all those sorts of things. They're going to get used so it's not like it's a waste of money. Um, and I, as I said, the, the thing is, you know, I feel got the camper van, why not use it? It's no good being miserable in the house, huddled around a candle. If we can be in a lovely off-grid camper van. So I hope maybe it's inspired you, if you haven't already done it, to get your van ready for, you know, if it happens. I'm sure we can all get through this, guys. And we will get out the other side, of course. Um, I hope you're all well. Do let me know in the comments what you're doing to prepare or are you not preparing and thinking it's not going to happen you're all scaremongering okay let me know and please remember to subscribe really helps the channel and i really want this channel to grow okay guys i will see you next time take care bye I love the